Hello, welcome to Health Issues. In December of 2019, a new form of infection was identified in Wuhan City, the province of Hubei in China. It was later identified to be a new form of coronavirus, and it quickly spread in January to infect this city of Wuhan of about 11 million. By late January, the government of China declared a lockdown in this city. Let's discuss more about this novel coronavirus. This is Dr. Teddy Herbosa, your host. In this episode on the novel coronavirus, we have Dr. Ronald Law, Chief of Preparedness Division of the Health Emergency Management Bureau, Department of Health. He is responsible for policies, plans, and programs on the health and disaster resilience. He is also a faculty of the UP College of Public Health and is also a Fulbright Scholar on health security and author of several articles on health emergencies and disasters. Welcome to our show, Dr. Ronald. It's my pleasure, Dr. Ted. So it's very hot nowadays, and uh, all the newspapers, social media sites are talking about this outbreak or uh, public health emergency of international concern from the province of uh, Hubei or the city of Wuhan. Uh, what is NCOVARD? That's the new term they call it. NCOVARD 2019 is their official term. Okay. What is it? Okay. So it's a 2019 uh, novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease. It's a novel uh, virus, meaning to say it's a new strain of uh, disease. It belongs to the coronavirus family. So the, it's... The coronaviruses, what do they cause normally? Okay. Coronaviruses, uh, like if you remember our experience with SARS and MERS-CoV, they usually cause uh, a range of symptoms ranging from the simple cold, you know, Colds, cough and yeah. colds. Our cough and colds is, yeah. can be caused by a coronavirus, yeah. yes. And then, of course, it can also lead to severe respiratory problems. Which causing, is the pneumonia in the SARS, Yes, right? causing some difficulty of breathing, and uh, unfortunately, sometimes it can also lead to death, deaths. Correct, uh, death from the pneumonia or yes. the complications yes. of the SARS. So, where did this novel coronavirus, uh, ARD, acute respiratory disease, come from? Okay, so we have to go back to the timeline. So back in December of uh, last year, the World Health Organization was alerted to a new mysterious disease coming from uh, China. It, uh, it, it came from a seafood market. Mm -hmm. So some workers there have been uh, showing up some, some of the symptoms and they were uh, able to point out that they all came specific, from, the, yeah. from that market. They call it, in, in epidemiology, we call this clustering of cases. Yeah, a clustering. So it was not yet an outbreak. Yeah. They identified a clustering of uh, several. I think the initial was four. Yes. Report of about four cases. Yes. And they all came from the, from the, the same. doctors identified. It came yeah. from a source in the Wuhan seafood market. Yeah, seafood market. Was so, it from seafood? So we're still uh, not so sure about it. So studies are still uh, un being undertaken to really pinpoint. So uh, going back to the timeline. So a month after, so that is January of this year, January 2020, the Chinese authorities have started reporting this uh, the, 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 the to virus. To the World Health Organization. To the World Health Organization. This is part of what we call the international health regulation. Yeah. Right? If you have an outbreak, clustering, epidemic in your country, it is your duty as a country or as a member state of WHO to inform the regional office yeah. that there is an outbreak in your country so that the, your neighboring countries can prepare. Yes, exactly. Right. So China did this. Yeah. They informed WHO that there is a uh, clustering or outbreak in Wuhan city in January. Correct. So, so this, Wuhan, this coronavirus, uh, how different is it from SARS, the severe acute respiratory Syndrome, that's mm -hmm. what they call it, okay. because they didn't know it was a yeah. coronavirus. Yeah. So the old term was SARS, which yeah. also came from yeah. China. I think it came from a civet cat. Mm -hmm. And then MERS-CoV, yeah. which is the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, yeah. which came from camel, camels, right. which came from camels and uh, happened in the Middle East. Yeah. Right? So can you differentiate okay. all these three? NCOV, uh, SARS, which is the first one, NCOV, and MERSCO. Okay, so they have two commonalities. So first commonality is that uh, all of them belong to the same family of virus, which is coronavirus, mm -hmm. which is basically the way uh, the, the virus uh, looks, looks, like. looks like. Yeah. If you look at it on the electron microscope, they are like having crowns around yeah. the virus, right? 
And then second, the uh, point of commonality is the fact that uh, these are uh, zoonotic diseases. What do you mean by zoonotic disease? Okay. A zoonotic disease basically is a disease that's transmitted from animals to humans. So you, you have an animal and you get the infection from them. They have some sort of colds or cough. You get the virus from them. Can this be transmitted to other humans? There is a case of person-to-person -person transmission. So, so it comes from the animal, it goes to a human being, yeah. and then from the human being, it's trans transferred to another human being, yeah. and then you start an outbreak. Yeah. So that's basically what happened to these three, three different coronaviruses. So they're all different viruses, right? They all belong to the coronavirus family, family, the same way as the yeah. cough and colds belong to, mm -hmm. but they have different pathological uh, behaviors, right? Yeah, and they yeah. come from different animals, correct? Yeah, yeah. Correct. So around the middle, or I, I think early on when this was reported that several thousands were already infected mm -hmm. by the Chinese government, they declared a lockdown and we in the health sector was waiting for WHO mm -hmm. to, de and there were several cases already reported mm -hmm. in Thailand, in Japan, in the nearby countries, mm -hmm. there were already uh, cases of uh, citizens from China who have reported positive for it. And there was a lockdown by the yeah. Chinese government, but we were waiting for the WHO to declare a public health emergency of international. Can you tell me first, what is a public health emergency of international concern? Okay, a public health emergency of international concern is is being declared by WHO when they've seen, based on available statistics, that a certain disease uh, has started in one country, and more than that, it has already crossed borders. Meaning to say, many different countries have cases, and the critical thing to do here is contain and mitigate to limit further spread. And this is especially important, especially in the context of countries which have uh, health systems that have uh, some problems, you know. Weak health systems are Correct. more uh, vulnerable to this and aggressive strategies uh, is important. Because if I remember right, the World Health Organization developed the term public health emergency of international concern because they were criticized all the time that when they declare an outbreak or an epidemic, yeah. they were already late. Late, yeah. It was already So I think the former director general, DG, yeah. who was also an epidemiologist, yes. devised this concept of declaring public health emergency of international concern. Yeah. Uh, in the first meeting, after the first meeting of the core group of infectious disease and epidemiologists at WHO headquarters, mm -hmm. they decided that they would not yet Mm -hmm. declare a uh, public health emergency mm -hmm. of international concern. Mm -hmm. It took them uh, another week or so, mm -hmm. and then eventually today, yeah. it's already declared as a public health mm -hmm. emergency of mm -hmm. international concern. Yeah. What changes once you declare public health emergency of international concern? What changes, number one, are the strategies of different uh, countries. countries. So, uh, so after so that... We, we will have our own Department yes. of Health, we'll implement certain strategies to prevent yes. the, the entry and control the spread mm -hmm. if it's already in yeah. the country. Yeah. So each country is, it has its own governance. Yeah. They will take care of how to control the epidemic based on the system and the vulnerabilities yeah. in their system. Exactly. So the responses will be different per country. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So it's a public health emergency of international concern. I think it's several 18 countries already reported as of this date. Uh, let's understand, how do you get uh, NCOV? Okay. The, the infection. So, as I've said, studies are still underway, but most likely the mode of transmission is through the droplet. Okay. What droplet. is a droplet okay. infection? I referred to a aerosol okay. infection or okay. contact, yeah. right? Hand contact. Okay. Ebola, you get it by hand contact. Yeah. I think influenza, you yeah. get through an aerosol, yeah. right? And this one, colds and yeah. Yeah. coronavirus, yeah. you get to a droplet. Can yeah. you discuss yeah. the differences of these? So a droplet kind of uh, transmission is uh, uh, it, the analogy is like that of uh, when you cough or sneeze and you emit some particles. Your, your, yeah. your sneeze. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the distance is, uh, is kind of limited. Less, less. Less. So the, the virus cannot travel far. If yeah. I cough or sneeze now, the, the droplets will fall. Yeah. When, yeah. Once or the droplets my fall on any surface and by any chance you, you get into contact with that, 
and you don't do proper hand washing and any sanitation techniques, uh, you, 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 you can get that possibly. So this is how it should be that I, instead of doing the proper way mm -hmm. to cough, which is cough through your elbow, which you do not touch, you cough through your hands, yeah. and then I shake your hand, yeah. and then you touch your eyes and nose, yeah. you now transmit, I'm yeah. now transmitted the, the coronavirus yes. from my hand to your hand to your face, mouth, and nose. Yes. And then you can, it will now develop and reproduce yes. in your body, and yes. then you can represent with an illness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's through cr close contacts. So most of the cases happen to be people who have taken care of those who, who fell ill or those who are really close uh, family, friends, or contacts, so, so which we've seen. That, that's the other definition. Yeah. Uh, close contacts because you're taking care of somebody yeah. who has cough, colds, and fever, trancaso, in yeah. what we call it, and they're lying down. You, you take care of them, you touch them, you touch each other. The chances of yeah. you getting the virus yeah. is higher. Yeah, but so, this is coming from those people who have, uh, who have, the, who have the cases. Who, who, who have who got the cases. Confirmed positive. Confirmed positive yeah. Patients, uh, people who have been established to have contacts with these people who are positive. How do we know a person has NCOV? What are the symptoms of NCOV? Okay, of course, aside from the travel history now, so we have... So we have to add, number one, uh, risk factors. They traveled or was exposed yeah. to Wuhan, China. So the current case oh. definition now is, of course, uh, it includes the, the travel history. But, uh, but, but yet, we have to find out if there are locally occurring you know, cases, cases of coronavirus here. But that's another uh, story. So other than that, of course, uh, it's, uh, the classic symptoms are, are, are fever, cough, uh, cold. cold, shortness of, uh, of breath. breath. So that's already severe. That's pneumonia already. Yeah. So that the range of symptoms. So as of now, the important elements are they have traveled to Wuhan. Yeah. They are presenting with fever. Mm -hmm. They have colds, cough, cough colds, yeah. and may have may yeah. have difficulty of breathing. Yes. These people are what we call the uh, probable cases, suspect uh, we, we, cases, persons under investigation. Yeah, we call what them is? PUIs or persons so, under investigation. So the term we use now is person traveled from Wuhan and has cough, colds, mm -hmm. fever is considered a person under investigation, uh -huh. correct? Yeah. And how do we determine that it is the novel coronavirus? Okay, so good news is that we already have the, uh, the polymer. So now we have the ability to, to test. So previously, uh, we were uh, subjecting Sending our the test samples. out to Australia. Now correct. we have that capability. To Victoria. Yeah, Australia. Disease, yeah. Yeah. So now we, we, we can detect it. Uh, that's why we were able to confirm some cases already. I also asked our Philippine Genome Center because yeah. we have DNA sequencing. And I was told that uh, Dr. Distura is also uh, waiting for the reagents mm -hmm. so that they can also help the Department okay. of Health okay. do the testing. Yeah. So it's a, it's a test kit. Yeah, yeah. So That's they will good. take what sample would they take? Uh, it's, it, it's basically throat uh, samples, throat swabs. swabs yeah. Yeah. They'll take a swab of yeah. your throat, your nose, yes. and they put it in a vial. Yeah. And then it's run and they look for the... Uh, PCR or the yes. DNA sequence mm -hmm. because the nice thing that they did I think sometime in the middle of January is the Chinese government published yes. the DNA sequence yes. of uh, NCOV. Yes. Uh, how does that help publishing the DNA sequence? Of course knowing about that is uh, very important in terms of developing the necessary interventions. Mm. The, developing the test, the developing tests, an intervention. Yeah, treatment, uh -huh. uh, vaccine which vaccine. are very important uh, so is there, is there a vaccine now for NCOV? Unfortunately, as we speak, there's none. But uh, scientists are uh, uh, doubling their efforts to, to, because to the find out sequence. about it. Yeah, and I think available. the Australian mm -hmm. Institute where we sent our samples yeah. have been able to recreate yeah. the virus in the laboratory, mm -hmm. which is very interesting because then they can reproduce it and they can produce yeah. a weakened, weakened oh, virus, yeah. which can be a potential vaccine. Mm -hmm. So now there is no vaccine, how do we treat it? Okay, so like, there's no specific treatment yet okay. uh, because it's a novel coronavirus. So what we do is, it, the, the traditional, we, we call it, of course, symptomatic treatment. So uh, supportive treatment in, in terms of just treating the, the signs and symptoms and preventing any further uh, uh, complications, especially those people with comorbidities or those with other diseases. So there's an interesting report of the Thai government. The Thai Ministry of Health reported the use of antiviral with 
an HIV ret antiretroviral, a combination cocktail that they claim yeah. had some results. How does this work? I heard that it shows some promise, but as of now, there's no recommendation Correct. for so still experimental. patients to take this uh, HIV medication. Yeah. Still experimental, but we have to closely follow up the, you know, the but development. But that's how it is in medicine. Yeah. If you have no treatment, you'll try anything that's close to uh, possible yeah. treatment under experimental uh, 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 control yeah. or, uh, parameters. Mm -hmm. So that's, that seems future. How about the vaccine? How fast are people or laboratories able to produce a vaccine? Uh, most countries, I, I heard that U.S. Is, has been into it already since uh, two weeks ago. For the ago. SARS. For yeah. The, well, I think they were I, developing already were developing, a SARS yeah. or MERS-CoV type vaccine, and they want to try yes. that particular product. And I know That's that, also going to be experimental. Yeah, when I know they that Japan, that. Japan is, Japan and also. some other countries and other uh, different research groups around the world are, yeah, doing the extra effort. But uh, let's talk a little bit more about the virus. The virus seems to reproduce faster in cold weather. The, the weather today in China and in the Philippines and the other neighboring countries mm -hmm. is more or less winter weather. Mm -hmm. So it's cooler, as that's why the virus, is, they say, stays longer outside, yeah. so the transmission becomes yeah. more prevalent. Yeah, that's what we commonly know, however, mm -hmm. but we cannot say that just because the weather in the Philippines is hot doesn't mean it's going to kill the, the, the virus. So that's, yeah. that's, a, that's, that's a myth. So Because we've seen also in other countries that are uh, tropical, Crop. getting some of the cases. So that's not, that's not correct. So just because uh, it's hot in the Philippines doesn't mean uh, we're going to be spared from this because it's going to kill the virus. So it's Good. not. So, uh, uh, so that's one factor. Uh, what's the other condition that uh, actually will lead to the contagiousness of this uh, virus? Is, oh. it, uh -huh. is it very contagious? Is it contagious okay. uh, enough or should okay. we be scared? Should the okay. people be scared about its okay. spread? So that's a very good question. So uh, in terms of studying these viruses, sometimes we uh, describe their uh, infective potential, their ability to reproduce how one person, how many person can one infected person infect. Right. So we, that's the measure that's called the uh, RO. R O or R not they R not R not, not they yeah. call it R O and that's uh, the epidemiologists describe different diseases. Yes. So what is the published R R not or R zero of uh, NCOV? Okay, in most of the literature, it's from two to two point. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, two to, uh, to four. four. Two to four. Anywhere between yeah, that. Yeah, but definitely so less. What does that What does that mean? A person with NCOV, infected one, can, infected person can, can infect potentially yeah, two, two. two people in a room. For example, I'm yeah. in a room. I'm with you. I'm talking. Yeah, I can infect you. I can infect the cameraman mm -hmm. if I have the NCOV. Yeah, and maybe four if the other value is correct. Yeah. Up to four people yeah. in the room. How about another disease like uh, measles? What is the R naught of missiles? Do you know the R naught? It's higher. It's higher. It's, it's a uh, more contagious. I think it's 16. Disease. Yeah, yeah. It's far off. Yeah. It's far off. It's 16. That means yes. a child in the room, in a classroom, can infect 16 of yes. his classmates. Exactly. So it spreads faster. Yeah, yeah. So like when we had the measles outbreak, immediately the whole <laughs> city of Metro Manila was already having several cases. Correct. So this one is containable yeah. because it's R2 to 4, yeah. right? So we're able to control yeah. it. We will prevent. We will control yeah. its spread. Yeah, we understand that. It's so, R not is even less than that of uh, the the MERS. This one. Yeah. This okay. One, yeah. So MERS is more. Yeah. Uh, it's a higher R not. Yeah. I think that was six, right? Yeah, five yeah, to think, six. Yeah, uh, five to six. How deadly is this virus? Uh, there are okay. about three hundred deaths already reported internationally. Okay. But I think nineteen thousand have been infected yeah. and majority yeah. recovered. So in the how latest, deadly is NCOV? In the latest WHO situational reports, around 360 plus deaths. So the measure that we, uh, that we look at is what we call the case fatality rate. Yeah, the case or, CFR. Or the CFR. CFR. It means uh, if you get the, the disease, what's the likelihood that you're going to die? You're going to die. So uh, now it's, put, it, it's at 2.4%. 2.4% or 0 to 2.4%. 2. 2. Meaning to say, uh, out of 100 people, uh, who, who, two. who will get two. it? 2 to 4. Yeah. 
two to two. three people can yeah. die. Yeah. Two to three people out of a hundred. Yeah. That's that's fairly serious because dengue, for example, has a case fatality rate of 0.5. That's mm -hmm. what the, the Department of Health. It's less than one percent mm -hmm. of uh, mortality for yeah, dengue. Yeah. So this one is higher. I yeah. think. What are the other? Ebola mm -hmm. had a very high, high yeah. case fatality yeah, rate. Yeah. I think it's almost eight out of ten. Eight, uh, uh, six, six. Six out of ten. Yeah. Six out of ten was the case fatality rate. Yeah. So you have a very deadly yeah. disease like like uh, Ebola. The good thing about deadly diseases is when the host dies, mm -hmm. the infection stops. Yeah. So Ebola <laughs> is good because if they kill the host, the but a virus like measles. You'll infect many kids, yeah. they don't die, yeah. you'll infect other kids. So yeah. it's something like this. Mm -hmm. This one has a high contagious, contagiousness, but also a pretty high mortality. Huh? Who mm -hmm. can die? Of course, uh, first, uh, those who are immunocompromised. So based on... What do you mean by immunocompromised? Though these are people who, are, who belong to the, uh, the elderly ones, elderly group. All right. Sorry. Because I was, I was looking at the statistics and they were like 45 years old, 60 yeah. years old. So what, what's their definition of elderly? Okay. <laughs> Not only about the age, it's about the presence of other conditions okay. as well. That comorbidities. The comorbidities, as we, as we say. So if your person has several diseases, hypertension, diabetes, high blood, or whatever disease, asthma, their chances to die is higher, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, are the children also at risk? Yeah, uh, young young mm -hmm. children, yeah. younger the younger age group and the older. So the people in the extremes of age mm -hmm. we call yeah. are high risk. Uh, how do we prevent NCOV? This been now a uh, what do you know, uh, panic buying of uh, masks and okay. uh, N95 surgical mm -hmm. masks. Yeah, uh, is that correct? No, that's not correct. So the first. Okay thing that, uh, that we need to really prevent it is uh, we have to arm our, ourselves with the, we have to educate ourselves Correct. using the right information from the right source, if I may add. Correct. You, you said earlier it's droplet infection. Yeah. And how do you do prevent droplet infection? Okay, droplet infection, as I've said, uh, I'm, we're not saying that uh, use of mass is, uh, is not needed. So use of mass is still uh, good to to if you're, for example, uh, symptomatic or ill. If you're ill, you wear the yeah, mask. To protect so you protect the population. Other people from being infected by you, you, you use the mask. So many people are wrong. They're normal and they want to wear a mask to prevent the yeah. illness. What should they do to prevent the illness? So uh, avoiding uh, uh, large crowds. Well, hand washing helps. Hand, hand washing, washing will help. yes. Alcohol rub will help. You mentioned because it's a droplet uh, infection. infection, so hand washing is uh, the first priority. The first priority. For aerosol, it's the mask, yeah. right? You have an N95, it's aerosol. But for droplet infection, it's really hand washing, hand washing. and cough etiquette. Yeah, cough Making etiquette. Making sure that if you cough, you cough with a tissue and mm -hmm. throw it away yeah. in proper disposal. Or if you don't have tissue, you cough in a... Can I use my handkerchief? And cough with my handkerchief? Yeah, sure. I can, but I put it back in here, and then my hand is also <laughs> Oh, infected. you have to make sure you're... Yeah, yeah. Hand, also, yeah. so hand washing is the key. I think the message really here is that frequent hand washing, every time you go to the yeah. toilet, wash, take that opportunity to use soap and yeah. water. Ashram. If you're a lady, they probably have an alcohol gel, a hygienic alcohol gel, and hand sanitizer. Yeah. You use that as often as possible. Yeah so that you prevent any spread and you don't touch her yeah. nose and mouth with unclean hands. Yes, right? exactly. And, and if you can prevent, I think that they, they say the wearing of the surgical mask prevents you from touching your nose and mouth. <laughs> and that's why it yes. looks effective. The truth is, it's really the, yeah, hand, the hand washing. washing yeah. So that's a very interesting And, and with hand washing, you also prevent other diseases, not only... Not only NCO. Yeah. So it's uh, part of hygiene. Yeah. Uh, wash your hands frequently. Use alcohol in the office yeah. because you transmit mm -hmm. paper or whatever. To Correct. Each other. Very interesting. What other measures should we do? Of uh, course, uh, with the mention of people who are immunocompromised, so part of uh, our strategy is strengthening our our immune system. Uh -huh. uh, proper nutrition, diet, exercise. Exercise. No sleep well. Yeah. Sleep well. Uh, enough sleep. No no over fatigue and. Uh, be able to make sure that you eat well, yeah. don't uh, skip meals so that your constitution and health mm -hmm. will be strong. Yeah. 
basically, all these infections are happening nowadays, but uh, we need to also address how we can prevent more of its uh, spread. Uh, I mean, contain it. Mm -hmm. Our Department of Health has several measures. So one is quarantine. Yeah. One is uh, contact tracing. Mm -hmm. Another one is isolation. Yeah. So let's go define this for, okay. the for our viewers. What is quarantine? Okay. Quarantine is, uh, uh, you've heard a lot about that. It's basically to keep people away from people who are possibly uh, infected or okay. those who are being monitored because so of a the person probability. does not have to have symptoms, mm -hmm. maybe just one factor. They came from Wuhan. I can quarantine them. Yeah. As a health authority, I say, you're coming from an area the, where there is an outbreak, an epidemic. I'm going to quarantine you. Mm -hmm. How long do I quarantine them? So the standard is uh, not less than 14 days. So no, the, these people who came from Wuhan okay. should be quarantined in a special location and should not meet the general population yes. until they do not exhibit any yeah. symptoms. If they exhibit symptoms within that 14 days, they start to have cough, okay. cold, fever, and they came from Wuhan, we isolate them, correct? Yeah. So uh, what is isolation? Okay, isolation is, uh, again, same principle as... Uh, Quarantine to closely look into the situation of a certain uh, symptomatic. patient. So and now then, it's a symptomatic yeah. patient. It's the symptomatic we isolate. It's the asymptomatic we quarantine. Yes, yes. Okay. So that's a, so. What's a lockdown? Okay, a lockdown has been imposed in China. China. So it's part of a strategy to contain and mitigate the the spread. The spread. Oh, but that's interesting. I'm reading articles. They say this is the first time in the history yeah. of public health that a city with 11 million people was put on lockdown. Mm -hmm. So nobody knows if this is going to be effective, if China has done something mm -hmm. good, yeah. if they've discovered a new way to, uh, contain, to contain, in, yeah. contain infectious diseases. What do you think of the lockdown they did? Uh, it's not yet the, a good time to talk about how mm -hmm. appropriate the strategy was, but surely Until we, uh, we can only uh, surmise that the Chinese authorities have been uh, trying to do their best. Correct. But uh, now it's under review how they were able to uh, do it, and uh, there are many criticisms. Uh, I see. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, that should be the subject of uh, any so, investigation. But yeah, the very least. We should study it and find out because if historically, no government has ever, has ever implemented a lockdown. We yeah. implemented quarantine. Mm -hmm. We quarantined a. Remember SARS? Mm -hmm. There was a barangay in Pangasinan. Yeah. The, our SARS patient was a nurse from Canada who came in and infected her father, her father. who had colon cancer. Yeah. And then they went to Pangasinan, their hometown. And what we did was we quarantined. Yes. Uh, quarantined or what do you call it? A lockdown. It was yeah, basically, basically a lockdown because like no one could get out mm -hmm. and no one could get yeah, in yeah. that city. So it was a small lockdown yeah, because it was yeah. just a barangay. Yeah. So were, was that necessary or I think that was unnecessary? Uh, at that time. Going back, uh, yeah. It may in, be. in retrospect, when we yeah. review that, all we need is contact tracing. Yeah. So the principles of epidemiology, find the index case, the source, yeah. and then make sure prevent human-to-human uh, -human transmission through contact tracing. Yeah. So the contact, so right now we have a death in the Philippines. So we're going after the passengers yes. that sat beside this index case, yes. the one that died. Mm -hmm. And, and the fiancé, I think. Mm -hmm. So the partners, the two partners. Those that sit beside them are what we call persons under investigation. investigation. I think several of them reported yeah. already yeah. from all the three flights. Mm -hmm. And even the hotels they stayed in, yeah. they have also been identified so that people are warned. And they told them to undergo self voluntary self-quarantine. Self self Can you define that? Yeah. Self-quarantine is... Uh, yeah, we, we do that for people who... Uh, Possible. Yeah, possible. Possible exposure. Yeah, possible. Possible Meaning, exposure. That means you can manifest it within the incubation yeah. period. Incubation period is the latent period, right? So they can manifest within 7 to 14 yeah. days. Symptoms. Yeah. So we tell them to self-quarantine and not go out. Yes. Correct. So they have to watch out for those symptoms and uh, add to that that they have to report that to... If they show some, some signs and symptoms, they have to report those, of course, to the health authorities. For when, when I was uh, in the DOH, we handled the MERS-CoV. And it seemed that uh, 
the rumors spread faster the, than the uh, virus itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in fact, this is, an, this is a, a dictum that I try to teach now in my classes about epidemics. That the, the rumors and the fake news, especially today in an era of social media, because this is the first time we're having this NCOB with the spread of social media, and there's so many fake news and so much conspiracy out there. Uh, mm -hmm. What is this goes now to in disaster and emergency yeah. under risk communication. Risk communication. Exactly. Can you explain what is risk communication? Yeah. So risk communication is a strategy to to manage. So like uh, with pandemics, with the NCOV 2019 ARD, it's not only so much about the disease that we're managing. We're managing also the the reaction of people Correct. Uh -huh. resulting to, to panic, uh, mm. chaos, unnecessary, uh, you know. Uh, I remember of, the meningococcemia. Yeah. Remember meningococcemia, which was allegedly identified in Baguio? There was so much uh, effect because the rumor spread that children were dying of meningococcemia. And there was a lot of economic loss because many Filipinos didn't go up to Baguio that mm -hmm. summer for fear of meningococcemia. Yeah. When the WHO came in and studied all the deaths, they were deaths from meningococcemia. <laughs> so, you know how, how the, the fake news yeah. caused yeah. fear and caused economic yeah. losses for yeah. several people, yeah. hotels, people that sell food, restaurants, mm -hmm. and everything. So I think the city of Baguio died because of misinformation mm -hmm. that it was a meningococcemia outbreak when after several weeks, the WHO findings was opposite. Mm -hmm. So very important, the transfer of Information. information yeah. So I see now that our Department of Health has press conferences twice a day. Yeah. They, they actually have one in the morning and one, one in the day. afternoon. I always open my social media and I see the face of our Secretary of yeah. Health yeah. explaining the developments and mm -hmm. trying to combat fake news. And I open my social media. Yeah. There are also fake news about conspiracy <laughs> theory. Yeah. This is germ warfare. That there are stuff. So these yeah. things actually collide. Yeah. So it's very important that we also... Uh, have transparency yes. in trying to answer the deals of this yes. uh, epidemic. Yes. Ronald, it's been a correct. very interesting discussion. Maybe you can have advice to our viewers out there about what to do to stay safe and healthy okay. during this time of uh, public health emergency of international <laughs> concern. Okay, I'd like to take this opportunity to, uh, again, uh, encourage people to uh, be very aware of the health risks, different health, health risks around and uh, one key thing here is getting the right information right from the right source. So let us not be a weapon of, uh, let's not add to the confusion. Let's not add to the misinformation and disinformation. So all of us, uh, if we can at least be good instruments of information. So the government is doing its very best to uh, combat it. So uh, trust and respect uh, to our health authorities is very important and uh, we need all the help that we can get from other agencies and most especially from uh, people. So now is not the time to, to panic, but I'm not saying it's not something uh, worth looking towards something serious. So let's not panic, but let's take the necessary precautions. And then at the end of the day, it's all about our own health that will uh, really help us out in, in, the, in this situation. So making our immune system uh, strong, using masks sparingly, only for reasons that are really, really reasonable. And then, uh, of course, hand washing is very important. The importance of hygiene, we cannot overemphasize. And then, uh, yeah. Well, thank you for all your advice. It's been an interesting discussion. We do a fist pump because they recommend no handshakes. We didn't share our body fluids. Ladies and gentlemen, in an era of public health emergency of international concern, we need everybody's cooperation. We have the leadership, we have the government to address the issue of the entry of NCOV in the Philippines. We trust them. Let's be transparent. Let's not be part of the problem, but be part of the solution. Let's not share before we share anything we find on social media. Let us fact check and wait for the officials to actually declare. Have a healthy day. And thank you for viewing Health Issues.